possible versus plausible versus probable in the pyramid of truth. The purpose of this presentation is to differentiate the various degrees of truth in the meaning of the words possible, plausible, and probable when used in a scientific context. In the common use of these words in layman's terms, these words are used interchangeably. However, in the scientific context, each of these words has a distinct meaning and implication when it comes to determining truth and accuracy. Being able to distinguish the difference between possible, plausible, and probable empowers one to be able to identify weak arguments containing lesser degrees of truth and also empowers one to be able to construct stronger arguments with higher degrees of truth. This presentation builds on concepts presented in one of my earlier videos entitled Nine Types of Reason, which serves as a prerequisite. So this is the pyramid of truth. The gold capstone on the top of the pyramid represents the truth, that is, information that is confirmed, factual, accurate, and 100% certain. Ideally, this is what we want to obtain. On our way to the truth, at the top of the pyramid, we have to pass through three layers in respective order of possible, plausible, and probable. In short, possible is what can be true or has the potential of being true. Plausible is truth determined by way of valid logic and reason, and probable is what is most likely to be true. But before we discuss the first three layers, we have to discuss what the sand represents. The sand represents what is impossible, that is, information that is false, fallacious, phony, and not true. The sand represents information or material that we cannot build with. We use deductive reasoning with the capability condition to separate what is possible from what is impossible in order to build and construct the first layer of the pyramid. So the first layer of the pyramid, colored in red, represents information, premises, ideas, or concepts that are possible. That is information that has the potential to be true. It may or may not be true with various degrees of certainty. Possible information is information that obeys the laws of physics. It exists in the realm of possibility within the limits of ability or reality. There are no contradictory proven facts, but there is also no guarantee that it is true. Possible information is information that can be true. It has the capability of being true. But it's important to note that just because something can happen doesn't mean that it will happen. Just because something can be true doesn't mean that it is true. And when someone is arguing from the mere possibility of something, you will hear them saying things like this can happen or that can happen or this can be true or that can be true. The can is a key word that someone is arguing from possibility. Possibility arguments are the weakest of arguments. Possibility arguments are only one step above impossibility or falsehood. There are almost an infinite number of possibilities that can be imagined for any given subject. As human beings, we have neither the time nor the energy to weigh and consider every single thing that has the mere possibility to be true. It is indeed overwhelming. Thus, we move to our next layer, which is plausibility. The second layer of the pyramid, colored in black, represents information, premises, ideas, or concepts that are plausible. The word plausible in the context of scientific terminology means logical and reasonable. From the infinite number of possibilities, we use logic and reason to determine which piece of information, idea, concept, or premise is plausible, that is, most reasonable. Different forms of reason are used to determine plausibility, including inductive reasoning, abductive reasoning, causal reasoning, and practical reasoning, just to name a few. Plausibility means you can demonstrate without any logical fallacies that there is valid reason that something is true. Everything determined as plausible is also possible, but not everything possible is plausible. Plausibility can be determined by way of reason before specific data and evidence is collected. This relates to the old aphorism, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. It is true that the absence of evidence is not necessarily evidence of absence. That is to say, just because there is no empirical proof of something does not mean that empirical proof does not exist. However, until information that is proven by reason has empirical evidence, then plausibility is the best qualification that can be given in the absence of evidence. Ideally, you want to have evidence, facts, and data to support your plausible argument. And when unbiasedly collecting evidence and data, in most cases, you will find evidence in support of and refuting your idea, 
which brings us to the next layer of the pyramid which is probability. The third layer of the pyramid colored with the green to yellow gradient on our way to the truth represents information, premises, ideas and concepts that are probable. After collecting evidence and data for your plausible ideas, you will come across information that supports your idea and you will come across information that refutes your idea. It is important to note that pseudoscience is the process of collecting only the information that supports your idea and ignoring the information that refutes your idea. When scientists collect data, there will be some information that supports their plausible ideas and some information that refutes their plausible ideas. Everything probable must also be plausible, but not everything that is plausible is also probable. Probability is determined by way of statistical reasoning when weighing the supporting evidence versus the refuting evidence. The word probable in the context of scientific terminology means something that is most likely a strong chance or statistically significant. When the evidence supporting an idea is greater than the evidence refuting an idea in a ratio greater than 50%, then it is fair to say that the argument is probable, i.e. most likely to be true. However, within probability, there are varying degrees of strength from greater than 50% to 99.9%. You have to admit that something that is 75% likely to be true is better than something that is only 51% likely to be true. And something that is 85% likely to be true is better than something that is only 75% likely to be true and so on. When you get to the level of 90%, 95%, and 99% probable, then you are in the range of what is called statistically significant, where there may be some refuting evidence, but it's highly likely that the argument is true. When people try to debate with information that is true by way of probability, i.e. highly likely or most probable, they attempt to find a small amount of information in the minority that refutes the concept and ignore the overwhelming majority of information that supports the idea. Again, we reiterate, choosing to accept the minority of evidence for a probable argument and ignoring the majority of evidence for a probable argument is the methodology of pseudoscience and not science. For the overwhelming majority of ideas and concepts, there is information confirming and refuting the idea and being able to say something is most likely, most probable or statistically significant is the best qualification that can be given to the majority of information. For a few very rare concepts, ideas or information that are deemed 100% probable i.e. 100% certain and confirmed with no refuting evidence then these are the ideas, concepts and points of information that make it to the gold capstone of our pyramid and can be deemed the truth. In summary, again Possible is information that can be true or has the potential of being true. Plausible is information that is true determined by valid logic and reason. And probable is information that is most likely to be true. These are the three steps on the road to the truth which separate truth from falsehood.